I'm going to embark on a few videos. Uh, I'm going to try to keep them eh, relatively short. I know some of my videos get kind of long. But I'll try to keep them a little short. We're going to talk about belts. I've been asked about them uh, a few different times. So I thought, since this is the year of the belt apparently, everybody wants a belt, we're going to talk about them. Uh, I don't do a lot of single layer belts. Single layer belts are whiz bang, you can slap them together, send them out the door pretty quick. And that's all there is to that. So I'm going to go into my multi layer belts. The Most of them are just double layer. And uh, they're pretty relatively easy to make. And that's about it. I'll do some that are. Uh, the first one I'm going to do is going to be plain. Then I have one that's going to have some stamping on it. I'll do one with some uh, more tooling on it. Um, yeah, so we're going to go about, go about it that way. I think that's a good way to do it. First, I'm going to talk to you about some tools that that are handy to have. Not so necessary. I mean, you don't really have to have them but they're handy. First one that I like to have is a thickness gauge. This one is fairly simple. I'll leave links, their affiliate links, to all these tools that I'm talking about. And in each video I'll have links to tools that I use down in the description tools for that video. And uh, we'll go from there. There will also be a link just to my Amazon store where you can purchase those tools. That being said, they are affiliate links. Buying stuff from there helps the channel, helps me buy equipment. I do need a new camera, so <laughs> I know that. I do know that. So uh, let's get into it. You can buy, there's a lot of different ways that you can buy straps. I buy straps. I'm not ashamed to say that because it can be a pain in the butt to sit here and bust out straps. I can spend an afternoon doing it. You know, it's one of those things. The uh, lighter straps that I use, my 4 to 5s and my 6 to 7s that I use, I do cut those out of hides. So I will get a, uh, a side of 4 to 5 ounce and I'll just start busting out straps. And they'll all be over an inch and a half. I want them a little wider than my blanks are. My blanks are inch and a half. Uh, and they're just regular straps, they're not belt blanks. So if, uh, you'll hear me refer to them as blanks. They're just straps. Plain straps. Um, so they're nothing fancy. There's uh, nothing cut on either end. You know, you can buy, go to Tandy and you can buy belt blanks. And there's nothing wrong with them. I like them. I've used them in the past. And still do when I'm up in the cities, in the Twin Cities, I'll swing by Tandy and grab a handful of them. Uh, these, some of these came from Springfield Leather. And that's one of the places I like to get them from. They seem to be decent straps. This is one of the longer straps. Um, the backs look decent. There's no loose spots on it. It's just a, uh, a decent bat blank. They're a decent strap. Um, this one is a longer one. It's 64 inches, I believe. So this is for the big man's belt. Um, I think you can get them up to... I know Tandy's got them up to 72 inches. Because I've used those too. <laughs> my belt needs to be at one of those still. So I'm still waiting to make my own. Um, but that's what those are. And I think it's an imported leather. These, I'm trying these out. I haven't ever bought these before. These are definitely an imported. They say they're an imported leather. But as I was sitting here looking at them, I bought five of them just to try them out. And some practice tooling on belts. I haven't tooled a lot of belts. I've stamped them and such, but I haven't tooled them. Uh, as I was sitting here looking at them, they look like mighty fine leather. I'm kind of impressed. So we'll see how they tool, but they look like some decent leather. 
So I am going to make one of my belts, that one of the belts I'm going to make is going to be made out of this leather. This is Yeah, what's the thickness? So you want to measure, you know, if you don't know the thickness of a lot of straps, you don't always know. It's three and a half millimeters, 3.3, 3.5. I have this leather weight thickness chart. So if we, if we go down to, there's 3.2, 3.6, makes it an eight to nine ounce leaning more towards the 9 ounce. So that's a decent weight. Um, when I'm doing a lot of belts I'll use a uh, 11 to 13 ounce when I can. When I'm doing my, my premium belts and I know what I'm doing on them I'll use that 11 to 13 ounce and I will back it with something like this. Um, these straps I cut my own. I think this is Five ounce, it's two millimeters on the money. So this is just a five ounce blank strap. Um, but these are an import leather. They're stiffer, which is fine for a belt. You want your belt to be a good, good stout leather. So I like that. We'll see how it works. And I will, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, I've got a bust out a side that's up on top there. I need to get out that's a six to seven ounce, I believe. And that's what I gotta cut a few backings for these. I ran out of them. <laughs> um, these, I've got two blanks here. These are cut off of one of my tooling hides that I use. And. These are running closer to, well, they're right at about 8 ounce. So they're a little lighter. I will back these probably. I might just put the two of these together because that will give me that would give me about a 16 ounce belt. Which normally if I'm dealing with a 11 to 13, we'll call it 12, is a 4.8 millimeter with a 4 to 5 backing. So we're at 5, 6, 7, about 8 ounces. Yeah, we'll, we're right there. So I may just put these two together for one belt. And that's about a quarter of an inch. And that's about where my belts usually are. But this is my tooling leather, so it's a little, you know, little nicer leather to work with, as far as tooling goes, anyway. So you just kind of got to make up your mind what kind of leather you want to use. You can buy strap goods from just about any leather supplier. Uh, Weaver, but the only thing I see on their site is all beveled already. It's all edge bed run through an edge beveler. I don't like that. Because uh, then you wind up having to sand off the bevel if you put a backing on it. Uh, Don Gonzalez sells belt kits, and it's all Herman Oak leather, so it's good leather. And it's the uh, the belt itself and the backing all ready to go. Uh, you just got to cut your stuff up. So that's kind of, I guess, the basics of it. You can also this belt is a uh, antique buffalo, antique buffalo, aged buffalo, something like that, that I picked up at Springfield Leather. Um, looks it looks really cool. <laughs> uh, put a nice buckle on it with some matching Chicago screws, it's backed, and it's just a nice looking belt. And this one is a. 37 to 38 inch belt. I use six holes so I've got a little there's a little leeway in there but it's a darn nice belt 
came out really good. You'll see video on it because that's one of the videos that's going to be coming up. But you can get nice, nice blanks like this. I know the leather guy sells uh, sells them. Uh, Maker's Leather Supply sells Herman Oak blanks, and I think Wicket and Craig blanks or straps. I keep calling them blanks. I call them blanks in my shop. But you can get strap goods from just about any leather supplier. So keep that in mind. If you want to tool it, go to a straight veg tan tooling leather. Um, other than that, those, you know, the thickness gauge is pretty handy. <coughs> um, you don't necessarily need a, a strap end cutter. I, I've always liked the uh, English point. I don't even have round point strap end cutters, just English point. Uh, for the longest time I just would cut them in there. I have templates that I will also show video on, but I made templates for laying out my holes and laying out the other end so that I can just set this down. I can put, I use oval holes and I'll explain all that when I go to making the belt. But I can mark all my holes, so all I got to do is punch them through. Same with this one. It works pretty slick, and it just makes life a little easier. You don't have to use anything like that. Uh, Maker's Leather Supply has uh, some belt templates. I think Springfield has belt templates. Just about anywhere does. You can get that stuff. You can make your own. Uh, however you want to do it. Some people use a different tip. English point is just something that I've always used and kind of like. So I may try one with a different tip on it. Who knows? And uh, what else we got? Tool wise a divider is always handy. Um, kind of indispensable tool if you're doing any kind of leather crafting. I like to have A picture like this I have a note on here your blank needs to be your waist size plus 11 inches so if you have if you're making a 30 if you got a 38 inch waist the blank itself for the out, outer belt needs to be 38 plus 11 inches you need a 49 inch blank or strap to start with it's just kind of a rule of thumb. I'll go through a couple of different methods that I've used in the past of to make a belt. And there's a lot of different ways to make a belt. Don't let anybody fool you. There's some really neat ways and some really simple ways to do it um, that can really look really cool and kind of make it your own. Um, the first few videos are just going to be the basics. So, I think, you know, really there isn't much. I keep a few different uh, patterns. And I'll put, I may get some close-ups of these. Uh, I keep some patterns that I use. Different patterns that I tool or stamp. These are just stamping patterns. But, I keep a few of them around that so people can see what it kind of looks like. They're not dyed. Um, a stitch groover I think is indispensable. You don't necessarily need to groove the back side of the belt. The front side I think should really be groove, or, yeah, grooved so your stitches lay down into that groove. And uh, some punches. Some, just some drive punches. Now if you, you know, if you just need to get a, a regular old, if you're on a budget, I was on a pretty tight budget when I started. I just bought a cheap set of drive punches and then later on I bought a set of uh, C.S. Osborne punches and found out that these weren't any, these were probably saved me money when I bought these because they lasted longer. I've had these for several years now and it's it's not a huge set 
I did add on, uh, this is a 3 8 I did add on a half inch because I use that for uh, making little leather washers. A whole different video. Um, <clears throat> I have oval punches. I think we did a video making this pouch. But I just have the three oval punches that Tandy sells. That's what I use for my belts. But we'll get into all that with each belt. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. I think that's about it. So, I'm going to dive into the first belt we're going to make. And that one is going to be just a plain belt. Just a plain old belt. Uh, it'll, it'll be two layers. It'll be the, uh, it'll have the, uh, I'll use the import blank with a, uh, hopefully, I can get that other hide down and strap off a couple of heavier, uh, boy, I can't talk. <coughs> and a couple of uh, six to seven ounce uh, backings. So we'll get after that here. Um, I know I'm forgetting plenty. You'll need a good maul. I recently picked up uh, a Berry King. This is a 24 ounce maul. Can't beat it. It's a good solid tool to have around. I have come to love this maul. <laughs> but being a little more budget con conscious, I don't know that Tandy sells this anymore. This was a decent one too. This I still use this a lot. It's not as heavy as the Berry King. I want to say this is probably in that 16 to 18 ounce range. But I still use it quite often. Um, you can also pick up some of these. These are available on Amazon. Um, I used this one for a long time. Still use it from time to time. Works great. It's just the head is kind of small. So, um, a stitch groover. Something like this. I need to cut this off. This is too long. <laughs> but, something like that works great. Um, a lot of times, since you're grooving before you're doing any edge finishing, depending on the project, this one is set at an eighth of an inch. This one is set a little over an eighth of an inch, but not quite three sixteenths. This is the one I usually use for belts, just because it's a little over an eighth. <clears throat> so, you, it never hurts. These are not that expensive. You can get really expensive ones, but you don't need to. This was the first one I ever bought about I don't know, a dozen years ago. I've had it for a long time. I've used it for grooving, making grooves. I've used it for burnishing. I've done everything with this thing. It's been a great tool to have. So, there's something to think about. Um, and that's probably the main things you need to worry about until we get into actually tooling and stamping. Uh, really, you don't even need a wing divider for most of it until you get to the tooling and stamping. The uh, slot punch I use an inch and a quarter slot for my buckles. I don't have an inch and a quarter slot punch. I use a one inch. If you're going to buy one slot punch, I'd say get a one inch. You'll probably be able to cut every slot you need with a one inch punch. So that's the way I do that. I've got a one inch and I've got an inch and a half. So that part is pretty much where we're at. And that's going to be the end of this video. I'll leave a link down below to my Amazon store. You can check out some of the tools that I use for my leather craft. Uh, you will need needles and thread and all that kind of stuff. But I think that's about it. Yeah. Pick your favorite leather supplier. 
buy your belt planks and tools and such from them. Um, the links on Amazon that I have in my, my store are all Amazon links. Some of the tools that, are, that I use are not available on Amazon, which is fine. And shop around a little. Sometimes Amazon's not the best price. I ain't ashamed to say that. But, anyway, um, I think, I think that's about it. So there you go. That's going to be it for this video. Stay tuned for the belt, bit, belt videos. I'm going to try to do them one a week right after this one. So, stay safe. God bless. If you're not subscribed already, please subscribe. Like the video. Drop in some comments. If there's something special you want to see on the belt coming up, let me know. I'll try to work it in. And uh, with that being said, catch you in the next video. Bye.